Well, we'll have a little time tonight to check the stream and see how that it is working. So I might have gone on just a few minutes early. Amen. But I'll just praise the Lord a little bit. Well, God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Oh, he answers prayer. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He's so good to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I hope you've all had a good day. I pray you've all had a good day today. And tonight I want to share with you a bedtime story. The Lord's been dealing with me about, he's been that little whisper that you hear on the inside of yourself. It isn't a harsh yell or a stern voice. It's just this little whisper, bedtime story. A few days didn't go by and I hadn't done it. Bedtime story. So, you know, the Holy Spirit to me is like a merry-go-round sometimes. When he wants to get a point across and you don't hear it the first time, or maybe it's something you've done before, like with me with the bedtime story, and he wants me to do another one, and I haven't done one for a while. It's like he's got that little message. It's like a merry-go-round. It just keeps going around and around and around until I finally listen and say, Yes, Lord. So tonight I'm having a Yes, Lord moment. I believe, you know, it was almost a year ago. It was last summer when the Lord spoke to me about sharing a bedtime story for those who need healing here on the Divine Healing page specifically. And the reason he told me to do that was because he wants you to go to sleep thinking about the power of God. There are so many things that we can think about that want to go through our minds when we get in our beds at night. I know I experience the same thing. But the Lord wants you to go to sleep thinking about the power of God. His power towards you for you, in you, working while you're sleeping, pouring out towards you 24 7 365. So tonight I've chosen a wonderful story from Dr. Lillian Yeomans, and it's entitled A Wonderful Tree. And in case you wonder, it's taken from this book, Healing Treasury, by Lillian B. Yeomans. And it's, see, it's kind of thick. It's a compilation of four of her books. And this one in particular comes from her little book entitled Healing from Heaven. There's four little books in here, Healing from Heaven, the Great Physician, The Balm of Gilead, and Health and Healing. So I'm taking the one from her first little book, Healing from Heaven. A Wonderful Tree. And this is the story from the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, about Israel. When they came out of Egypt, they crossed through the Red Sea, and they came to the bitter waters. And the Lord showed Moses a tree to cast into the bitter waters that made them sweet. And she's going to, of course, draw a parallel between the tree of Moses and the tree of Calvary. Oh, it's so sweet. 
Let's pray this evening. Father, I thank you for these sweet, sweet stories, bedtime stories, Lord, so we can go to sleep thinking about your power to save, to deliver, and to heal. So, Father, I just pray for each one. Lord, maybe there's someone out there in bitter waters this evening. Maybe they've had a tough day, just in the natural. Maybe something bitter has happened, Father, that has hurt them mentally or emotionally. Father, maybe they're physically suffering a bitter time with a sickness in their bodies. Oh, Lord, you have given us the tree of Calvary to sweeten the bitter waters. And so, Lord, I thank you tonight for the power that flows down from that precious place, from that precious tree with sweet waters to flow in, Father, and make our bitter waters sweet. And, Lord, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. A wonderful tree. The Lord showed him a tree, Exodus 15:25. Exodus chapter 14 dealt with the institution of the Passover and of the triumphant march of the Israelites out of the Egyptian bondage under which they had groaned for upwards of 400 years. These events, Israel's deliverance from Egypt, are absolutely without parallel in history whether sacred or profane, natural or spiritual history. With a high hand and an outstretched arm and mighty signs and wonders, God delivered them. Oh, I just love those words. And I had to say them over and over to myself several times because that is the way that God still delivers us today, with a high hand an outstretched arm, and mighty signs and wonders. Oh, just say that to me, with me. God delivers me from the bitter waters with a high hand, an outstretched arm, and mighty signs and wonders. <laughs> oh, yes, God delivered them, and they made their exit from the land of the pharaohs, for they had been so long in slavery. Thraldom is the word she uses. That means slavery. They came out of the land of the pharaohs laden down with the treasures of their former masters. We read in Exodus 12.35 that according to the word of Moses, they borrowed, quote, borrowed, from the Egyptians, jewels of gold and silver, as well as clothing, raiment. Then she tells another little story. I once heard a learned Jewish convert to Christianity tell an incident in relation to this text that the Israelites borrowed from the Egyptians. <clears throat> I once heard a learned Jewish convert to Christianity tell an incident in relation to this text, which I have found most instructive to illustrate how people who know nothing about it will venture to criticize the word of God. He had dropped into a meeting of socialists in a hall in London, England, just as a speaker was saying, the God of the Christians is a thief, a robber. In the 12th chapter of Exodus, we read that he directed the Israelites on their departure from Egypt to borrow jewels of silver, jewels of gold and raiment, which they could never return. And they obeyed him and spoiled the Egyptians. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. The Jewish convert rose and asked to speak. And when the request was granted, he said, hmm, I think, my friend, 
that you should know something more about the Bible and its author, God, before you undertake to criticize it. I am a Hebrew. That book is written in my mother tongue. The word in the original, in the Hebrew, is not borrow, but ask. And the real meaning of the word is demand. Surely you who profess to be so anxious to see all men righteously dealt with ought to be the last to object to this. Demand recompense for all your centuries of toil, for your labor, your sweat, your blood, the lives that the cruel lash of the slave master have cost. And this is what they did. They demanded, they asked of the Egyptians. Some of you might find that little story very interesting because as we read it in our King James Version, it says borrow, they borrowed them. But in the Hebrew, it actually said they asked or demanded of the Egyptians spoils and jewels and raiment. And that's one of the ways they built the tabernacle, had the essentials they needed to build the tabernacle. Well, to assume the wonderful tale, the children of Israel were led out and by God's itinerary, they were brought to the Red Sea at a point where they were walled in by perpendicular rocks, while the horses and chariots of Pharaoh were heard in full pursuit in the rear. At God's command, oh hallelujah, they marched forward and the Red Sea, <laughs> oh glory, what, the Red Sea, at his command, they marched forward. And the Red Sea, which also heard his command. Hmm, isn't that interesting? The other night we talked about a fever hearing his command. Here she's talking about how the Red Sea heard his command. At God's command, they marched forward in the Red Sea, which also heard his voice, piled up itself on either side, so that they passed dry shod between colossal walls of water. They reached the other side and held a jubilee of triumph. Oh, Miriam led in the dance as the maidens played with timbrels. <laughs> oh, sound the loud timbrel o'er Egypt's dark sea. Jehovah hath triumphed, and his people are free. <laughs> Ooh, hoo, hoo. Sound the loud timbrel o'er Egypt's dark sea. Jehovah hath triumphed, and his people are free. Hmm. Oh, those words taste so good. Oh, every victory that you get, there's a timbrel that is sounding out in the spirit world. This phrase is going forth, Jehovah has triumphed and his people are free. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh, she goes on, but, but, alas, 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 the echo of these strains of joy had hardly died away before they are replaced by murmuring against God. Oh, can it be possible? Only a short time since these people were doubtlessly saying, huh, after they came through the Red Sea, for my part, after what I've seen with my own eyes and heard with my own ears, I shall never forget the wonder of it. I can never doubt again. <laughs> no, not till the next time. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. We do deal with these things these days too, don't we? Here we find them in Exodus 15, 23, murmuring because the waters at Mara were bitter. You would think they would have thought back 
that the God who delivered them, who had rolled back the Red Sea at their cry, could also remedy this trouble. But no, they murmured against Moses. Mm, when people are not right with God and want to murmur, but are afraid to find fault with him, then they're apt to attack his servants. So let us be careful if we find that tendency in our hearts even, much less such bitter words on our lips. Mm. Jehovah is distinctively the redemptive name of God. Oh yes, Jehovah is distinctively the redemptive name of God. And in his redemptive relationship to man, Jehovah has seven compound names which reveal him as meeting fully every need of man from his lost state to the glorious ending of a complete redemption. And physical healing can be clearly seen in each of these seven compound names. Number one, Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. Genesis 22, 8. Our first need in redemption was a perfect sacrifice. And that God provided by giving his son, oh, the spotless lamb of God, to bear our sins and sicknesses on that cruel tree on the hill of the skull near Jerusalem. Number two, Jehovah Rapha, Exodus fifteen twenty six, the Lord that healeth thee. Number three, Jehovah Nisi, Exodus seventeen eight to fifteen, the Lord is our banner. Oh, the Lord who fights our battles for us when Satan would attack us, whether in soul or body. Number four, Jehovah Shalom. Judges 6.24, the Lord our peace. The Lord our peace. Only one who is in perfect health, physically as well as spiritually and mentally, can be kept in perfect peace. And Jesus offers himself to us. Oh, as peace for our triune beings, spirit, soul, and body. Jesus offers himself to you as your peace for your spirit, your soul, and your body. Yes. Ephesians 2.14 says, He is our peace. Number five, Jehovah Ra'a, the Lord, our shepherd, Psalm 23, 1. The physical well-being of the sheep is the shepherd's responsibility. Yes, think of it even in the natural. He applies the healing balm from his horn of oil to the sores and bruises. Oh, so Jesus. The good shepherd heals those who are his. <laughs> he applies the healing balm from his horn of oil to your sores and bruises. Number six, Jehovah Sidkenu, Jeremiah 23, 6, the Lord your righteousness or rightness for spirit soul, and body, all three of which God teaches us to pray may be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then number seven, Jehovah Shama, the Lord is present. Ezekiel forty-eight thirty-five. 
the same Jesus who healed all who were oppressed by the devil, Acts 10, 38, is with us today. Oh, the bitter waters of Mara remind us that life, of which water is a type, as it forms the great bulk of all living things, that life is embittered at its very fountainhead. The tiny baby is hardly born into the world before the anxious mother is inquiring whether it is strong or if it shows any evidence of this or that or any other tendency to a disease or infirmity. When the Israelites were brought face to face with the bitter waters of Marah, God was there to reveal himself. Ho, 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 hear that, hear that. When they faced bitter waters, God was there to reveal himself. Oh, hallelujah, under a new name to meet the new need. That name, the Lord that healeth. Oh, notice, healeth, present tense, that always heals. Present, continuous healing. And the Lord showed Moses a tree. Oh, for a fresh God-given vision of that tree and the fruit it bears. Truly, as it is put in the Song of Solomon, we can sit down under its shadow with great delight, and its fruit is sweet to our taste. Oh. There is a substance known in chemistry that is about 700 times sweeter than sugar. Hmm, can you imagine that? Whew, 700 times sweeter than sugar. It was discovered accidentally by a chemist when he was experimenting with cold coal tar products. He had been called to dinner and after washing his hands in the laboratory as usual, changed his coat and sat down at the table. Taking a sip of tea, he was disgusted to find it sweeter than the sweetest syrup he had ever tasted. He was about to remonstrate with his wife, but took a bite of bread first to take the sickening taste of the sweetness out of his mouth, and to his amazement, the bread tasted like the richest cake. Then the thought occurred to him, is it possible that I am sweet? He put his thumb in his mouth to suck it like a baby, and it was as though he had a sugar plum in his mouth. To his wife's surprise, he jumped and ran to the laboratory, where he carefully examined the contents of every test tube and crucible. At last, he found the compound he had accidentally produced when boiling some of the chemicals together and the vapor from which had gotten into his throat, on his lips, into his lungs, so that he was all sweetness. <laughs> oh, when we see this tree in the light which the Holy Ghost sheds, Upon it, through the word of God, everything becomes sweet. Yes. When we see the cross in the light which the Holy Ghost sheds upon it, through the word of God, everything becomes sweet. Then she gives a little refrain here. Never further than thy cross, never higher than thy feet. The earth's Richest things are dross. The earth's bitterest things are sweet. Yes, everything is sweet for us, for we ourselves are sweet. Oh, nay, rather, we are the sweetness. We are sweetness. If Jesus, who is the word of God and who is sweeter than honey, and the honeycomb is dwelling and reigning in us, Oh, here, Galatians 2.20. It is no longer I, but Christ who dwelleth in me. Oh, that wonderful tree. 
that God showed Moses. That was a wonderful tree that God showed Moses and it bears wonderful fruit. Oh, this next part is just so good. Oh, we're going to the transfiguration now. When Jesus, Moses, and Elias met in the glory of the Mount of Transfiguration, there was no theme so fitting for their discourse as the decease which Jesus was to accomplish at Jerusalem. For that death that he accomplished at Jerusalem was the greatest achievement that this world has ever witnessed. The only act of sacrifice acceptable to God that has been performed by a human being. For Jesus was true man as well as very God, a very God. Oh, let's read that again. It was so rich. When Jesus, Moses, and Elias met in the glory of the Mount of Transfiguration, there was no theme so fitting for their discourse as the decease, which Jesus was to accomplish at Jerusalem. For that death was the greatest achievement that this world has ever witnessed. That only act of sacrifice acceptable to God, that only act of sacrifice since the fall that was acceptable to God performed by a human being. For Jesus was true man as well as very God, a very God. For all the righteous acts of the saints, oh, my, 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 I've got to slow down because I can't not do this right. All the righteous acts of we the saints are necessarily performed in the power of that one sacrifice of himself. Can you imagine? The righteous acts that we perform are performed in the power of that one sacrifice of he himself, by which he has perfected them that are sanctified. His sacrifice by which he has sanctified and perfected us and are, as it were, an integral part that sacrifice of himself, which is an integral part of that accomplishment. Oh, on that tree, we find pardon and peace, healing and health, victory over death and hell. For by his death on that tree, Jesus conquered death and him that had the power of death. Oh, Jesus. Then she gives a little saying here. Jesus bowed to the grave, destroyed it so, and death, and by his death, death he slew. Jesus bowed to the grave and destroyed it so, and death by his dying he slew. Isn't that good? Let me do it again. Jesus bowed to the grave and destroyed it so. And death, by his dying, he slew. <laughs> oh, that tree was most fittingly set up on Calvary. In Latin, that is the word, Calvarium, the place of the skull. The very zenith, that, that tree was the most, most fittingly set up on Calvary, the very zenith of Satan's power. For what more fully shows the depth of man's fall than the transformation of Jesus' beautiful human countenance, radiant with intelligence and glowing with emotion and bearing the impress of the divine image upon it? All oh, the transformation of that wonderful, radiant countenance 
into a ghastly, grinning, gruesome skull. Oh, this then is the tree that God showed Moses, which, when cast into the waters, made them sweet. In a book which I have been reading, it is stated that the waters in the vicinity of Mara are still bitter from an excess of alkali salts, but that the fount, which was healed by the branch, can still be distinguished from the others by its comparative sweetness. Notice that the tree had to be cast into the waters. That is, the atoning merits of Christ have to be applied to our own particular case of sin, sickness, or both, as the case may be, by our own personal faith. I am told that in the public library at Boston, Massachusetts, Sargent, one of the greatest modern artists, has brought out most beautifully and clearly in his mural decoration in, entitled The Dogma of Redemption, he has brought out the truth of our deliverance from sin, sickness, and death through the sacrifice of Christ. In the picture, Jesus hangs on the cross, and on either side of him are our first parents, Adam and Eve. Mm, can you imagine? Oh, 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 this painting, the cross, and on either side of it, our first parents, Adam and Eve each holding in their hands golden chalices in which they are catching drops of the precious blood that flows from his pierced hands. Above the cross in this mural are the words, dying for the sins of the world. And beneath the whole mural is this inscription, he came to redeem our bodies and to cleanse our hearts. Oh, my, my, my. In all the work, in all of this mural, there is a strong line drawn between the, the celestial and the terrestrial, the heavenly and the earthly. Oh, a strong line drawn between the two of them. But... The uplifted cross breaks through this line and lets heaven and earth run together as one. <laughs> yes, there is a strong line between us and the supernatural where God is before we're born again. But the cross pierced that line and now we live we're dual realm people. Oh, the uplifted cross breaks through this and lets heaven and earth run together as one. Oh, praise God, that is what the cross does for us. The cross itself is upheld in this mural. The cross itself is upheld by angels whose faces are radiant with bliss as though they comprehended the final fullest, most glorious purpose of God in the supreme sacrifice, and they cannot contain their joy. Also in this painting, this mural, are the instruments of agony, the scourge, the hammer, the spear, and all are held in the hands of angels who are bathed with the rest of the scene in unutterable glory. Oh, may God in his mercy show us the tree. Capital T, the tree. And when we see it, may we apply it to our hearts and lives, our spirits, souls, and bodies, so that we may become the very sweetness of Jesus. Oh, Exodus 15, 25 says, There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them at the bitter waters. 
The word of God always proves or tests us. Some people say, I will try God's promises for healing. <laughs> no, you won't. They will try you. God's promises are tried and purified seven times and forever settled. You are the one that is on trial. God is not on trial. His truth reaches to the heavens and his faithfulness to the clouds. He made this statute and ordinance, and they have never been repealed. He sealed them with his covenant, and forevermore he is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth. Oh, yes. That tree cast into our lives will remain, remove every trace of the bitterness of sin and rebellion from our lives and make us sweet with the heavenly sweetness of our Lord. Then we can claim absolute immunity from all the sickness that was brought by God in his righteous judgments on the Egyptians. The great poet Dante has placed in his poem Inferno over the portal of hell the well-known words. All hope abandon ye who enter here. Oh, but as we enter as little children into the kingdom of heaven through faith in a crucified Savior, we read the golden letters. All fear abandon ye who enter here. For he hath redeemed us from all evil, and will preserve us blameless, spirit, soul, and body, unto his glorious coming. Hallelujah. He has redeemed us from all evil, and will preserve us blameless, in spirit, soul, and body, unto his glorious coming coming. Thank you, Father. A wonderful tree. Oh, you should go back and look at the picture that I posted with the announcement I made of doing the bedtime story this evening. Now that we've seen the ex or heard the explanation of it, Jesus on the cross, our first parents standing there catching the blood dripping from his hands in golden goblets hallelujah oh the angels the whole mural radiant with unutterable glory oh in a statement that she made that death was the greatest achievement that this world has ever witnessed so true and it is the greatest event in our lives also, individually, that we've ever witnessed. I shall never forget that day when by the light of the Holy Spirit, I saw that tree and what it had done for me. Let's pray. Oh, Father, we deal with bitterness, we deal with life, its irritations and frustrations. But Lord, when we can just, in our imagination, step off this world and step out there like in space, in the spiritual realm, Lord, where you are, and we can see that tree, that wonderful tree, and just gaze upon it. For a little while looking father as the angels do as they looked upon it as adam and eve father marveled at it oh she to whom the first promise of redemption was given the seed of woman shall crush the head of the serpent oh father let us never lose sight of that wonderful tree for on that wonderful tree 
all the things that you desired for us from the foundations of the world came to be. Lord, help us to walk in the light, in the fullness, Father, of these blessings that you have restored to us through that sacrifice of the second Adam, the last Adam. And Father, I thank you for those that listen to this little story. Father, she's spoken some complicated concepts and words at times. But let the thread of the story and its simplicity and its wonder come through to each one so they may be captivated again, Lord, by your death, burial, and resurrection. And Father, let the power of those events fully operate in them spirit, soul, and body. <laughs> at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Good night, everyone. God bless you. Go to sleep, thinking about that power that split the Red Sea and makes the bitter water sweet.